So you see, it's important, isn't it? It's important how we conduct ourselves. How we conduct ourselves, the Bible says, to those that are without. To those that are on the outside. Because we want them to see the love of God. Um, so that's why I feel like the preaching on love is, is, is important. You know, I mean, it's, it's a challenge. I tell you, after I read 1 Corinthians 13, I feel pretty small a lot of times. Because in our mind, we just got this one de de definition of love. I love you. Right? Well, love uh, speaks through its actions. You can say all day long, I love you. But love demands action. What are you willing to do for love? To, to the extent that you're willing to lay down your life, that's the extent that you love. You know, and we, uh, you know, like with, with our children, you know, I, I, I'm probably not your model dad, I don't know, but I, <laughs> I like to challenge my kids. You know, they'll say, I love you. I'll say, do you really love me? I love you, daddy. Well, then obey me. Don't love you that much. <laughs> you see, love, we can talk about love all day long until it requires sacrifice. Love requires sacrifice. Because the agape kind of love does not wait for a response back. Yeah, I've, I've been with that fellow, that that man of mine for 25 years and I've about had enough of them. <laughs> well, see, that's not true of God we love that. Now, granted, I will say this, to have, to me, a, a marriage that's, that's healthy and vibrant and flowing uh, and moving on with God, two people's required. I mean, that's just the bottom line. That's right? Right? I mean, you can be as spiritual as you want, but if you don't, you know, if there's not that mutual, it's not, it's not God's plan. It's not going to be, uh, it's not going to be satisfying. It's, and it's not God's design. But, let's say that you're the only one standing for the family. And that other person has checked out. That's where you see the, the true beauty of agape love come in. You see, God's love is His secret weapon. It, it will work where other things will fail. I mean, you can, you can quote somebody the Bible all day, but they're going to look at your life. Right? The Bible word for that is conversation. How should your conversation be? And uh, so it's quarter to twelve. I want to look at a little bit more at love in 1 Corinthians 13. I like to be done by 12 if I can because I know many of you have uh, special medical needs. <laughs> your, your stomach starts doing that thing. It starts eating itself, I think. Is that what it is? Just like, just like my, my boys will come to me. I'm starving. Uh, I said, what? Starving? That's a, that's a medical condition where your body is now eating itself. <laughs> Let's go now. You need food immediately. <laughs> Starving? You just ate two hours ago. <laughs> Our kids can be, they, can, they, they fit perfectly into drama, don't they? Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can be actors, man, that like the best of them. Uh, so 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and I will say this because, you know, the chapter before is the chapter on gifts. You know, a genuine attitude of love sees its need for the gifts. Because love and compassion moves you to want to meet the need of people. And, and once you start to do that, you realize, I don't have what it takes. I don't have what it takes to meet the needs of these people. God, help me meet the needs of these people. And part of his meeting those needs are the gifts that God gives. Now, we remember on Wednesday night, we've been looking at them. You know, there's ministry gifts. God puts people in ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers. You know, these different ministries. 
to help and to equip the body. We see that there are some giftings that are just really practical, like hospitality, like love, I mean, like uh, mercy and compassion. And in 1 Peter, he talks about some more of those kind of gifts. But what you realize, and especially as you begin to read in about love, you realize that I can't do, I can't love people like this. It's just not part of who I am. And that's part of, you're on your way to recovery. You know? <laughs> like one time, uh, Gwen was having a really stressful day. She wouldn't mind me sharing this. Uh, I don't think. <laughs> she was having a really stressful day. And she said, I'm on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I said, honey, just go ahead and have it and let the healing begin. <laughs> I said, let's just get this breakdown going. Let's, let's get off the verge anymore. And let's let the healing begin. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, and she got filled with joy over that. So, yeah. joy. See, joy broke that. Uh, but she, uh, <laughs> but that's it. Realizing that. You know, I can't love people on my own. Well, that's, that's, that's the first step, is realizing you need the love of God shed abroad in your heart, right? Yeah. And so we've gone over some of these. Uh, one I, I just want to look at two more descriptions of love today. Let's see. Let me find it. Uh, let's look at verse 5. He says, it does not behave itself unseemly. Now, I've, I've written a few notes. You know, that word unseemly, listen to this. It means to act in an insensitive way where you're tactless, thoughtless, and rude. And it can also mean harsh language. That's what unseemly means. I mean, I tell you, that's... You know... The beauty of the King James is it has all these kind of flowery words, but half the time, most people don't know what they mean. <laughs> oh, it's beautiful. I love that. It does not behave unseemly. Well, what's unseemly mean? You've got to put a definition on it, right? And so, this was really, you know, how many times can we act insensitive to people? And I'll tell you, I wrote down a couple things. Unseemly can wear a mask. It can hide. And here's one way it can hide. I'm just kidding. Right. Have you ever heard that? Where somebody has just come up to you, dropped a hand grenade down your shirt. <laughs> it exploded, and they say, just kidding. Uh. Uh, the Bible calls that coarse jesting. You know, where jesting is kind of like, you know, getting laughs from people. 